<laughs> I don't know. What <laughs> are like, you guys looking at? Just, I don't know. It's just my brother. He just makes me smile. <laughs> it's just what he does. It's a, oh, that's it's a, a good, good one. Face. Did he just drop something on his foot, or is he getting a uh, job? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, in the boatyard. Well. <laughs> Previously on Delos, we left Grenada in our wake, arrived at Union Island, and began our exploration of the Tobago Keys. Good morning. It is a beautiful Sunday morning, and today we're actually going to move the boat out of the proper Tobago Keys and to World's End Reef, which is just around the corner. But it sounds cool. There it is. We're going to go to Petit Tabac. Trying to anchor somewhere in here, and right now we are here. So it's just a slight little motor around the corner, avoiding the reef, and into there. And there's no boats there, so we should be by ourselves. Stoked? I like being by ourselves. Oh, focus, 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 focus. <laughs> On a selected subject. Ah, there you go, selected. Hello. Hi. Our destination is a bit of a celebrity island and has been featured in a pretty well-known pirate classic. Welcome to the Caribbean, love. We couldn't think of a better way to spend a Sunday morning than a pirate adventure with a Delos twist. But first, we needed to find a good place to anchor Delos. Sucks, the weather was supposed to be, there was supposed to be no wind today and there's wind and swell. And for this island, there's really not any protection unless it's really calm conditions. If we anchor where we're supposed to anchor, it can be quite dangerous because you're getting blown onto a lee shore and the anchorage is real tight. Like there's a lot of coral bombing. So I'm going to go into the dinghy and just have a look and see if there's room for us and if it's good to anchor. Is it, is it uh, coral or sand? It's coral. I'm gonna take a peek real quick though. Okay. It's like sandy here with some rocks and a little bit of coral. Okay, uh, let's go check out the inside and just see what that looks like. I think that's good. Let's try. It was boldy ass bass. Given the conditions, we decided to play it safe and anchor outside the lagoon in about five meters of water. Hey, Captain! Does anybody know any stupid pirate jokes? No. I can't talk What's the, the pirate's favorite letter of the alphabet? Arr. Anybody? I bet you thought it was R, didn't you? No, it's actually the C. A pirate! walks into a bar and 
he has a steering wheel stuck between his pants. And the barkeep says to him, Arr, why ye has the steering wheel lodged in between your legs? And the pirate says, I don't know, but it's driving me nuts. <laughs> Not even a pirate. Joke. <laughs> yeah, it's driving me nuts. I like it. Drop it! Drop it! the whole thing and it's super chill and it's a good spot to hang out for the day for sure I love palm trees too look at this one We're at a little island out in the middle of nowhere, uh, here in the middle of the Caribbean, and it happens to be an island that we are aware that Pirates of the Caribbean was filmed at. So Johnny Depp was here, what, 18 years ago or something like Brady that. Brady just said that that tree smells like Johnny Depp's pee. <laughs> it says it. Johnny P. Johnny, Johnny P. Right Depp there, says Brady. Cool. So if you remember the scene where he got marooned on the island with uh, Kira Knightley, and uh, she sent me. Uh, fire to the island and he no! found the uh, no hidden stash of rum. That's no! where we're at right now. Not the most foot friendly island, huh? No. And there's like all sorts of random shit. Look at this. You could just randomly step on a fluorescent lighting tube and cut the shit out of your foot. You just find the craziest things on islands, man. This trash washes up from all over the world. So what are we doing on this island today? Well, that's a damn good question. I don't actually know the answer to that. No, uh, we're just having some fun. We've uh, created a little cache of goodies to leave for somebody, and uh, we're gonna try and make a, a pirate riddle and see if anybody finds it. Ahoy, ye salty captain, who sailed the seven seas to find this grog and treasures buried among palm trees. Oh, a bottle of rum wouldn't do us any harm. A bottle of rum wouldn't do us any harm. We really wish we had a shovel. Why don't we have a shovel on a boat? We got some Dalo stickers, we got some drench stickers, random drench sunnies, our note, a couple awesome shirts. One of which is signed. This is very good Delos moonshine. It's been sitting in our bilge, soaking in oak as it sailed the seven seas. Looks at things, they've long been out of business. Robert spent three days lying on the beach drinking drunk. Welcome to the Caribbean. Your reward is one piece of booty and a swig of the captain's grog. After celebrating your victory, ye must sign the captain's log. Return this treasure from whence it came, so other pirates may have a crack. If you don't heed these here rules, then beware Davy Jones' attack. 
our brittlest regards, ye old crew of SV Dallas. All right, all you salty sailors, the deed is done. Come and find your treasure. <laughs> So we decided to send the Delos tribe a set of clues and see how many people could find the treasure. What I'm messing with here is the second part of the plan for the eco-friendly anti-fouling. The first part was the slippery paint. The second part is an ultrasonic anti-fouling system. But before we dive into that, let's do a quick review of our little experiment. The last time we painted Delos's hull was way back in Malaysia. We used a standard hard copper anti-foul, and it worked pretty good for the first two years. But now the paint has lost its effectiveness, and this is what our bottom looks like after only three weeks in the high growth waters of the Windward Islands of the Caribbean. A small reef is actually starting to form on Delos, which creates drag and slows us down. So we hauled out in Grenada, blasted the bottom back to the original gel coat, and applied a hard, slippery paint. Sea Speed has no chemical anti-fouling properties. The idea is to make it very difficult for things to stick and allow the motion of the boat through the water to strip off the growth. The only problem is that it really doesn't become effective until you reach speeds of eight to 10 knots through the water. We normally spend weeks exploring a destination, which means that between sails, there's no regular water flow over the hull and growth starts to stick. After almost a month of anchoring with very little sailing, here's what the bottom looks like. Although an improvement from the old worn out antifoul, we're still seeing quite a bit of soft growth. And even worse, the appearance of the dreaded knuckle busting hard cone shaped particles. Now that we have a baseline for the performance of the bottom paint on its own, I thought it would be a good idea to install and activate the ultrasonic system and see what a difference, if any, it makes on the bottom growth which basically works by uh, using electricity to activate this driver, which then powers these transducers, which turns the electrical energy into uh, vibrations. And the idea is to vibrate uh, the, the hull at such a frequency that it produces uh, air bubbles when it vibrates and the air bubbles pop and they destroy uh, any the ability for any organic or living matter to cling to the hole. I've never tried one. I've heard from some people that it works. I've heard from some people that it doesn't work. But um, anyway, we're gonna we're gonna install it and see if it makes a difference at all on the hole. So this is the electric control box. It uh, needs 12 or 24 volts, which I've just got run. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, <laughs> right to the rib cage, man. <laughs> Fuck. You okay? Uh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and I'm just gonna do a test transducer real close so it's easy to run the wires, and then we'll see the effect. Whoa, yeah, you can hear it in your head. Watch. Oh. You hear it? Yeah. Oh, it's weird, I don't know what it is, like, <laughs> how to describe that It's like an a, a, uh, energy necessary that these transducers make a good physical contact with the hole. So I'm trying to find uh, a relatively flat place away from bulkheads. Imagine if you were to hit the center of a drum to get the most reverberation possible, you wouldn't hit on the edge of the drum, but in the center. So we're gonna try and do the same thing with the fiberglass. It has this ring here that you are to epoxy like sand and roughen up the hole, make sure it's a good surface. Ooh, he's doing the mid-afternoon Pilates workout. <laughs> and then you epoxy that to the hole. It's marine epoxy color. So this, you're just supposed to apply a thin film on the bottom of this and then you literally epoxy it uh, straight to the hole. 
And voila. And then you put a little bit of Vaseline in here and then you screw it down inside the bilge. And then hook it up to that baby in it. It should be an interesting experiment. How many of those little rings do you put in? Four. So there's supposed to be one on either side of the keel, one on port, one on starboard, and then one in the bow and then one in the stern. And what they recommend for a boat this big. Nice. So one down, three to go? Uh, two down. Oh, two down. I missed that one. Yep. I snuck one in. Is this like a new, newer technology or it's new to you guys? It's been around for a long time, but uh, I, never heard of it. I don't think that many people have tried it on boats. So we're going to give it a test. We're filming the bottom week by week to document the results of the growth we're seeing and also the bottoms of other boats in the same anchorage as Delos for a comparison. When we have enough information, we'll report back with a video dedicated to the results of our little experiment. So stay tuned for that. Take your eyes off of Brian for two seconds. He's already on another project. Yeah. This guy stays busy. Here we go. Ah. All right, what are we on to now? What trouble you got yourself into? Ah, I found a bad battery cable, uh -huh. a charging cable in here that was smoking, and I had a new cable made. So we've only been running off of uh, one of these battery chargers. And now we'll be able to run off this one, which is 80 amps. And it should charge it faster. That's the plan. Nice. All right, kids, what are we doing? Uh, we've had the same bias of view shots at the end of the videos now for uh, six months, maybe seven months since Brazil. Eight months, nine months. Something in between six months and a year, I don't know. So we good. finally have time and we're in a beautiful place to try and try some new ones. So we're gonna do a little Blue and I walking around in the park with a metal detector. We find some beers, slam them. The only thing is this park is underwater. <laughs> so we're gonna tape some weights to my leg. Come on girl, wrap it. Well. I really wanna be able to walk. So but we're gonna have a safety, safety diver standing by. Today is a weird day on Delos because we are, it's one of the very, very, very rare days that we actually plan what we shoot. It turns out we're not that good at shooting planned things. <laughs> we struggle with this a bit. Um, but we're going to give it a go and we'll see what happens. Now this is the plan. Alright, step one to shooting a bias of beer. Chug a beer. <laughs> Alright, so what's our plan for down here? Alright, so you're gonna get in the water first right now. Yeah. And you're gonna go down, you're gonna scope it out, scope out the light situation with your camera. Okay. In the meantime, I'm gonna hang my feet off and oh, literally shit. go down and touch the bottom. Okay. What's our plan plan? We're gonna go down, look at each other, cheers, take a sip, sip. Yep. and then put the beers towards the camera. Okay. We roll in. Ready? Yep. I think that we got something that will work. I was a little uh, underweighted. Brady was a little overweighted. Yeah, so I think we got the shot. Jordan got the shot. So thank you so much. Thank you so much.
lots of troubles, man. Mm -hmm. What I say. How about this magical sunset, though? It's not bad. I'll tell you that much. There's some good sunsets in this part of the world. I don't know why it gets so pink, but I'm not complaining about it. I think our next build will have a front porch. Rocking chairs? Yeah. That's a pretty good idea. Sip some lemonade. <laughs> Up next on Delos, we sail back to Union Island and our addiction to kiteboarding begins. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm ready. I'm going to cruise straight out to Delos. Oh my god, he just got ripped. What are you doing, Kaza? <laughs> oh, you're good, man. We like neighbors over here. <laughs> anyway, moon cups, no. fertility, and pubes. That's what it's all about <laughs> on Delos. <laughs> <laughs> Business in the front, party in the back. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> like it? I like it a lot. 